we'll get right to the point. Uh, we'll go tank by tank. This is a 75 gallon. And here I've got 40 to 50 uh, F1 Tyrannochromus nigraventor from my wild nigraventor group, so bred in house. Two inches, some maybe even two and a half. I've got 10 to 12 F1 Rampochromus Esox yellowfin. They're about three inches. Uh, the biggest one might even be a bit bigger. Also bred from a group that I've had here, you guys saw. Uh, all those breeders were from Southeast Cichlids. So these fry are just crazy nice. We've got a few Mylochromus plagiotania from when I used to breed them. Still hanging around in here just because I couldn't catch them whenever I sold them. So I think there's three or four left. And then I also have seven two-inch Buchochromus heterotania juveniles. I just got a really good deal on them so I couldn't pass up getting them. I plan to grow them out and maybe sell some males, maybe sell them as a breeding group. I'm not sure, but... Us in the fish hobby, when you see a deal where you can make some money, you guys certainly know you have to jump on it because it's not always that easy. Moving on. A 40 breeder packed with fish. Uh, more F1 Tyrannochromus nigraventor. These are one group younger than the, the group you just saw. And also in here is what I thought were Buchochromus lepteris green and Tyrannochromus nigraventor hybrids. Well, they're not. You can see Nigraventor at that size, you can easily already see their markings. If you look at the, the other fish, no markings except horizontal. And these are, I'm fairly confident, hybrid cross of a Buchochromus lepturus green female and my Champsochromus crawlius Malawi trout male. So these are gonna be uh, lepturus trout, I suppose. And I think it's gonna be, I think it would be kind of a cool mixture, some bluish green uh, similar size, similar shape, so you're not going to see a lot of like weird deformities, I don't think. I think it could be a pretty slick looking fish. And yes, many of you have asked about some of these hybrids. This is one where I do think I'll grow a few out just out of curiosity. But no, I'm not going to be shipping out fry of these. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to risk these ending up getting grown out and bred to something when they shouldn't be. And then next thing you know, you're 10 gener generations deep and you've just got hybrids and you don't even know where they've all been sent to. So I might just keep a couple males to grow out, but that's probably going to be the end of it. But I will absolutely document them and we'll all see what they look like. These guys, I swear there's fish in there. They just don't like coming out at all when I'm near the tank. There's a few. They normally have cover in here, but I took it out just for video purposes. These are about one inch, maybe a little smaller than that. Uh, my first batch of Alanacara flavescent albino. Some of them already working with the red eyes, you can kind of tell. So really excited about that. Maybe one day they'll come out so you guys can see them. Here is a 10 gallon. Really excited about these guys. There's 40 or 50. This is my first group of in-house bred Lichnochromus acuticeps. These guys are a half inch or so. Very, very healthy, eating, growing well. If you get really close and you can see an individual, you can see the, uh, the mouth shape starting to form. These guys are just so hard to find as adults, so when we can start producing them at this type of level, uh, we can get them out there more to everybody, and then you know people don't have to wait six, eight months and spend a fortune just to get some of these rare type fish. Like I mentioned before, fish like this that have spawns of 60, 70, 80, there's no reason they have to be this ridiculously rare. So we're going to see if we can't get these out more commonly to the average fish keeper. And you don't need to just know somebody to be able to get these types of fish because that's really annoying. Here's a 10 gallon, oh this is a 20 gallon, sorry, with just some random stuff. Um, I do have some more F1 Rampochromus Esox. I've got some random Mbuna that were born from my Mbuna colony, which I'll show you in a second. I've got quite a few one to two inch common bristle nose pleco. And uh, these guys here, these tall guys that look strained and you probably can't put your finger on it, it's because those are also hybrids. Those are a cross between a Lichnochromus acuticeps and a Chilotilapia rhodesi. So you see kind of the beak forming, but also a tall body. That would explain that. Unlike the trout green cross, uh, I don't think these are gonna look as cool. They're kind of already looking weird. 
and humpbacked. So uh, I don't have a lot of hopes for this. I don't even know if I'm going to grow any out. Um, I just don't know that there's a lot of promise there, even out of curiosity. But no decisions made yet. Uh, we will see. Regardless of what I do with any type of hybrid, you know, I'm not going to be sending these out to possibly get into you know, the mainstream breeding of any type of hap. couple breeder boxes here. Uh, this one is more uh, albino flavescent. These are one group younger than the ones you saw earlier, but these actually, you can see them because there's no place to hide. I think there's 30 or 40 in there. Quite exciting. Here's a breeder box. These are more or less necromus acuticeps and also I think 10 to 15 uh, Kenyai imbuna that were born in my imbuna colony, which now we will go check out. Here's the 40 gallon Mbuna tank. Uh, nothing special here. I contemplated not even showing it. Uh, it's dirty, I haven't cleaned the glass. But they seem to do really well in there. They breed quite often. Uh, this is your standard Demasoni, Yellow Lab, uh, Snow White, uh, Johani. Nothing fancy, nothing rare. Just kind of a, you know, a dash of color, a dash of some, you know, explosive behavior at times because these guys are not always friendly to each other. But they do throw out some fry here and there, which people seem to enjoy. At least locally in my area, they do. So guys, let me know what you think. Uh, what do you think looks cool? What do you think has potential? What looks stupid? Uh, what looks butt-ass ugly? Just let me know. Uh, anything purebred, I think, is going to look really, really nice because all these strains are from Southeast Cichlids, uh, and you're not going to get much higher quality than that. I think those split gene are going to be really cool. Uh, like I said, the left turf screen, the trout, I think could be cool. Maybe some of those will go out to an all-male setup, but that's all I would ever consider doing. I think the hybrid of the rhodocyte and the acuticeps is going to look really, really dumb. <laughs> they already look awkward and kind of like you know the hunchback of Notre Dame. They don't look good, and I have a feeling they're not going to look any better as they grow. So those are probably not going to ever be uh, raised to see what they turn into. So I've got a pretty good idea what they're going to turn into. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, any questions you got, by all means, put it down there. And uh, I'll try to get back to all you guys. See ya.